Hi again and welcome back to ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Grant Ronald and I'm the Director of Product Management in Oracle's Application Development Tools Division. In the last two episodes I've been looking at the science and the solutions behind building a strong user experience for your ADF applications. And in this episode I want to outline some of the tips and the tricks for developing your own custom skins. Now the purpose of this episode is not to specifically teach you the mechanics of building an ADF skin. There's lots of material out there already. Instead what I'm looking at are what are the decisions that you might make when designing that skin. Specifically I'm talking about the colours, the contrast of colour choices, techniques like spacing and of course the font or the text that you use to brand or skin your application. I'm then going to close off this episode by showing you a couple of mock-ups of screenshots from our own Fusion applications where we looked at different options for colours and fonts and how some of the information from this episode was used to drive the visual design in our own uh, Fusion applications. So let's start off with colour. Colour is an incredibly important element in visual design. First of all, it can be a brand. So think of the colour that you associate with Oracle. And of course, that's red. Now, branding an application with your corporate identity is usually a good idea, but be careful. Colours also have an implied meaning, such as red is danger, it's emotionally intensive, it raises the blood pressure. Think of the colour of a stop sign. So would Fusion applications be best branded in red colour scheme? Probably not. It's also a very intense colour and so it's used as a primary colour in financial applications might not be the best idea. Red also works as an eye magnet. Coupled with the fact that we associate red with danger or stop, that's why it works well as an error message or, or an alert text. So what colour do we use for Fusion apps? Well, primarily we use um, blue in the skins for Fusion applications. Blue is a colour that's associated with stability, financial trust, wisdom, all important factors for business applications. It's also going to be uh, associated with conservative. And again, this is important that we don't pick very garish or outlandish colours which might go out of fashion quickly. It also happens that blue gives you quite a strong contrast and it's much easier on the eye when you're reading. There's also temperature associated with colours. Lighter colours bring objects more into the foregrounds, whilst dark colours tend to recede. So let's look at uh, a couple of examples of these on the next slide. So here's a quick visual test. Which letter in each of the box looks as if it's coming forward, and which one is receding or sitting slightly backwards? Which of the boxes in each of the set seems slightly closer to you? The lighter box tends to look as if it's more prominent, as if it's sitting more forward in your line of vision because it's a lighter colour. And in both examples you see here it's the right hand letter, those using the lighter colours, which looks to be sitting slightly forward. And in fact, if you look, you maybe think that the letter A in white almost looks as if it's slightly bigger than the others, even though they're all exactly the same size. Now let's consider contrast. Contrast is about the text you're using. It's the difference between the two colours, most noticeably the foreground and the background colours that you use for your text. And there's two key issues that we're concerned about here with contrast. The first is we have generally an ageing population where their eyesight isn't what it used to be. Uh, and in any case, you may have legal requirements for accessibility. And this would specify that a particular level of contrast for text is required to make it readable on that page. Now, the highest contrast is, of course, black text on, on a white background. And that's the kind of thing you'll see in textbooks, newspapers, and, and any sort of dense online text pages. However, even for those users with very good vision, poor contrast can cause eye strain 
and it can in fact render a page illegible if you have users with compromised vision. Now there are a number of tools you can use and if you google on keywords like luminosity, contrast, calculators, you'll probably find a number of good tools out there you can use. And the idea is you can use this tool and once in the tool you type in a code for your foreground colour um, and this is assuming for text and then a code for your background colour and this will tell you the contrast ratio for example 4.5 to 1 might be a ratio you have. Now this next slide here is intended to show examples and teach you about what we call the, the squint test which is very unscientific but it gives you a way whether to see if something is, is legible on the screen. So if you squint, as you would, uh, you can kind of read it up to a point but then it starts to become uh, illegible. So here you can see this is the same colour of text on each of these boxes we've just changed the background colour on the boxes and then look at the longer text sentence black on white is the, the best contrast ratio the black on the pale blue is still very good with a contrast which is nearly 17 to 1 the next box down is just about okay but it really only works for large text and the last dark blue box is way below the minimum ratio that's required for accessibility standards. Remember the harder it is to read, the less contrast between the foreground colour and the background colour, the more quickly you're going to cause eye strain. Especially if you've got pages or a website with lots of text that users are using uh, for long periods of time. Now the next topic is very important. It's nothing. Now what do I mean by nothing? It's blank space. Blank areas have a purpose. They're a design element. Think about if you had to read a book with no paragraph breaks in it. The paragraphs give you a visual break, just a moment to rest. Spaces also help to group text and information together. So it both helps group information and it helps separate different information from each other as well. But it can also disrupt the flow if it's used incorrectly. If you leave white space, the eye will pause. So make sure that's exactly what you want to be doing. Now on the left side, the big empty space tells you there's nothing else here and you can move on to the next column to the right. Nothing more to see here. Paragraph spacing is a good example of where padding is used to let your eye pause or rest for a moment between long strings of words. Because if you have a giant paragraph without any breaks, your eye will get tired. You won't know when the author has completed a thought and when you're on to the next thought. Here's another example. This is a before and after slide of some confusing padding and, and how we corrected it for good padding. Now, I know I've been in a situation where I've filled out a paper form and the word signature is it above or below the line. And I'm not sure which line to sign. And this happens in electronic format as well. The only reason you can see the email belongs to the one below it is because you can see the whole page. Now imagine if this were a longer page, your eyes fighting to try to find the relationship. Does that label belong to the top box or the bottom box? Each bit of white space tells you, this is a group, pause. This is another group, pause again. You can see in the first example how your eye gets confused about what the email label belongs to. If you move the labels closer to the related field, your eye sees that the gap between the field and the label is smaller and so ties the two together. The larger gaps between the label and the field also help your eyes bunch those related fields together. Now let's have a look at fonts. Now font choice should reflect the personality of the site or the brand. Is it conservative or very creative? And conservative tends to be more readable fonts such as Arial or New Times Roman. Eclectic fonts might give you a much trendier impression but they don't necessarily make it much more readable. 
Bold text, as you might expect, stands out in a page. It draws the eye. And because bold helps draw your eye, you should use it only on key headings or sections and don't overuse it. Your eye is also going to look for things to help it read the hierarchy of information that's on a page. So it looks for colour, it looks for bold, and so bold can be used uh, to help lay out the hierarchy of information on the page as well. And that's why you see in Oracle's Fusion applications pages with panels of information with bolded titles. It helps the customer compartmentalise information, for example, customer details, as one piece of information, even though it's made up of many fields. Italic font is something you have to be careful with, as it can be difficult to read on the screen, and it sometimes doesn't work with all character sets if you're running in different languages. You can also specify fallback fonts, where you define a different font to display if one's not available on the given machine. Now on the left is a Fusion example where you have a very uniform page, but it's the bold text that tells you a new section starts here, or a new section starts here. In the BBC example, if the page layout is not uniform, and you have lots of things competing for your attention, but the bold text again tells you a new story starts here. In both cases, the text is larger and bold, so your eye scans it first. And try the squint test to demonstrate how small text tends to then blur, but the bold text is popping out at you. Now let's see all of that science and know-how in a couple of screenshots. Here I'm going to show you two mock-ups of Fusion screens. The first uses a Fusion skin, and the second uses a new and improved skin called Skyros. First of all, both skins are based around the colour blue. Now remember we said this was a conservative and trustworthy colour and also provides good readability. Also on both skins we've used bolded text in the panel boxes on the left to help show the hierarchy of information. Also in the main centre panel of the screen we've bolded the titles for identification and corporate profile to help show the grouping or hierarchy of information on the page. The skins also use white as the selected tab colour since this helps move that tab forward into the user's vision, whilst the darker outer panel also helps this part of the page recede back, thus the main panel is sitting more forward because it's lighter and it's sitting out towards the user is the most important part of the page. Now let's look at some of the differences or improvements in between these two skins. Let's compare the noise that you perceive on the screen. How much is going on in this Fusion skin? And you'll see the Fusion skin makes use of a lot of shadows and shading and rounded edges. Now compare this to the Skyros skin, which is much cleaner and allows the eye to just focus or concentrate on the key information. The Skyros skin also increased the contrast. So just look at the panel boxes on the left and you can see how the contrast is much clearer. Also look at the tabs on the main page. The tabs stand out more on the Skyro skin because the tabs aren't against the shaded background as they are on the Fusion skin. So as you've seen, some very simple choices of colour, font and spacing can have a pretty serious impact on your user's experience of your application. Thanks very much for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV. In the next episode, I'm going to look at the user experience and design patterns associated with user experience. And I also want to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple of essential links that you might want to check out. There's the ADF Architecture TV channel, which you're watching, um, but in case you haven't subscribed, there's a link to subscribe. And also the ADF Architecture Square, which is our OTN hosted content, which has a number of white papers and guides, etc., which support the material that we've been uh, delivering here. So, thank you very much for watching ADF Architecture TV.